don't want it to reflect anybody else's opinion, especially management. How does that grab you? Be heard. Good afternoon, everyone. The telephone lines are open. The number to call in New Jersey, 489-WABC. From everywhere else, 212-563-WABC. In a program dedicated to the free and open exchange of ideas and of opinions, in the belief that as American citizens, you have a right to hear and to be heard. How empty those words get day by day. American citizens, what do they count for? By the way, ladies and gentlemen... Not that I mind because people would have just sat around and chewed gum and, and uh, blown their noses and talked and uh, done all sorts of things if they had played the national anthem of the United States of America. But even though they are lauding Nelson Mandela as though he is a combination of Moses, Jesus Christ, a little bit of God thrown in, uh, and anybody else you care to think of, when an assemblage of Americans <clears throat> gets together in Yankee Stadium for a dumb ball game, you know what they do? They play the national anthem. I don't happen to approve of national anthems being played prior to sporting events because I don't know what connection, if any, they have with a, a baseball game, a football game, a hockey game, a basketball game, or any other game. However, however, when we are having a, a governmental, when we are having a civic-oriented event, such as what happened in Yankee Stadium last week, you might have thought, you just might have thought that they would play the national anthem. How many times have you seen on television when our president or secretary of state or some other dignitary is in a foreign land and prior to the event they play the national anthem? Nobody questioned it, maybe because nobody thought about it, or maybe because everybody has become paralyzed with fear, unreasoning, unwarranted, illogical fear. Fear of what? Fear of whom? I dare ask that question. Damn it, I dare ask it. I have not fallen into lockstep. I have not marched with the platoon that is carrying on this frenzy this obsession, this uh, media hype to cover every move that the man makes. I want to commend William Dannemeyer, a congressman from California who boycott the congressional audience today of Nelson Mandela. I congratulate him, I laud him, not because I would have done the same, because I wouldn't. I would have wanted to hear what he had to say and see him up close. I laud him for having the courage to do that because everybody else is so afraid. But again, afraid of what? Afraid of what? Am I going to be the only guy in the country asking that question, afraid of what? Why is it we Americans, whether we're staunchly pro-Israeli or pro-Jewish or whatever the case may be, why is it that we never hesitate speaking up? Sometimes... Uh, uh, we uh, shoot from the lip, and then later we say, ah, yeah, I guess I went off half-cocked. But when it comes to this racial issue, we are so timorous. Why? Please, somebody tell me why. Why is there a double standard? You heard Mr. Kahn's report about the new uh, minority workforce in the city. It is white people. And uh, maybe that's why a poll revealed yesterday actually published this morning, shows less pessimism among blacks and more gloom by whites on New York's future. Six, month, uh, six months after uh, vacuous Dave Dinkins was inaugurated as mayor, black New Yorkers are sharply less pessimistic than white or Hispanic New Yorkers about their city's future. The divergence of views since vacuous Dave's election contrasts sharply with 17 years of results, polls on New York City's future. Not since the end of the administration of the Tower of Jelly 
known to some as John V. Lindsay in the early 1970s, have blacks been less pessimistic than whites about the city's future. Ah, dear. By the way, uh, Bob Herbert, Bob Herbert, I thank you. You don't know it, but uh, without realizing it, uh, you did uh, me a favor. I had uh, about a dozen people call me and say, hey, Bob Herbert's now using your, uh, your descriptive words. Several years ago, I uh, talked about marauders, criminals of all and any shade, as a mutant. Back in the 1970s, it occurred to me that anybody who was antisocial to the point of, of creating mayhem, to the point of, of injuring and killing fellow human beings, had to be a mutation, because I'd like to think that the human condition, in its natural form, in its unmutated form, is a more noble creature. And if you know anything about biology, you don't have to... you don't have to be a Gregor Mendel. If you know anything about it, you know that a mutation is something that is a variant, a departure from the norm. And therefore, robbers, rapists, muggers, killers, embezzlers, all kinds of antisocial miscreants, I have dubbed mutants. I was called racist. Somehow or other, some people thought that was a, a racial epithet, perhaps in coded form. But Bob Herbert, who first and foremost is black, in his column today, talks about the park rape scene, talks about it in cogent terms, talks about it with integrity, says, and I quote, the teenage mutants currently on trial for this gang rape and near-fatal beating are named Antron McRae, Yusef Salam, and Raymond Santana. This is not a pretty trio. Yesterday they sat together at the left-hand corner of the defense table. Some grown-ups had tried to dress them like divinity students or something, but it didn't work. God bless you, Bob Herbert. No matter what you may say about me, this is the second or third time in the last couple of months I've been moved to commend you. It's 17 minutes past 3 o'clock. And uh, later we'll be talking to uh, Senator John C. Danforth of Missouri, getting his views on the ruling uh, by the Supreme Court allowing federal judges to order state and local officials to raise taxes. Uh, that's right. They weren't elected to raise taxes, but uh, the uh, ruling by the Supreme Court says they can. Later, Pierre Rinfray. Now, uh, you may be wondering who he is. Is he the maitre d' at a refuge French restaurant? Not this week. Actually, right now he's, and forgive me, Republican Party, of which I am a member, he is the GOP candidate for governor in the state of New York. And... Uh, he may be the Republican secret weapon because Cuomo may actually get a ruptured appendix laughing so much he may uh, not treat the ruptured appendix and may develop peritonitis. I can dream, can't I? Da, 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 da. Anyway, before we do take our first phone call, I don't know how many of you were with us yesterday. I'd like to thank each and every one of you, but if you were, you may recall a phone call I received from a, a gentleman identifying himself as Charles. He said he was calling from Port Elizabeth, South Africa. And I didn't believe him, frankly. I, I've gotten to the point that I find it difficult to believe someone when they say something like that. He was so nonchalant about it, I just couldn't believe that someone would be wasting all that money to call from South Africa. He said he wanted to tell us how the appearance of Nelson Mandela in this country was being portrayed on the South African television. And uh, I didn't believe him. I said, he, I said, you're a fake, a phony, a fraud. I hung up on him. We uh, received a fax transmission from him. He indeed is in Port Elizabeth, Republic of South Africa. And uh, he did uh, call. And he says, as a former New Yorker, I can appreciate a healthy dose of cynicism is appropriate for daily functioning. 
uh, daily functioning there, particularly in your business. Nonetheless, I think you might be a bit more gracious about accepting long-distance calls and could have attempted to establish my bona fides more effectively rather than complain about my shtick. Actually, I was attempting to discuss the Mandela phenomenon with you. My brother in New York City indicated your show the previous Saturday was particularly enlightening. While no apology certainly is necessary, you may wish to advise your listeners that hostility is not an undisclosed side, side effect of the uh, Nutrisystem diet program. Kind regards, Charles Fishman. I think it might be a good idea if we were to call him and uh, let everybody hear the conversation. I think that's what we'll do. We'll do it. And with that, Roy Fredericks is uh, orgasmic because uh, it's going to allow him uh, an opportunity to prove that even though he's overpaid, at least he should be paid something. Uh, Tom, you're on WABC. Hello. Hi, I'm Tom from Staten Island. I'd just like to express my disappointment at George Bush's proposed tax increase, and I think the next presidential primary we should uh, perhaps have a different uh, Republican win the primary, hopefully run against Cuomo, or whoever. I just wonder what your opinion was. Are you feel all right, Tom, or are you just nervous because you're talking on the radio? I'm very nervous. Okay. <laughs> all right, I don't blame you. I think I would be, too, if I were a caller. Mm -hmm. um, politicians love to raise taxes. Uh, the only one that I can recall who really seemed to be interested in not raising taxes and in lowering them was Ronald Reagan. Mm. Uh, but th they love to raise taxes, some more blatantly than others. You have one extreme, like a Jim Florio. Mm. Uh, but uh, they love to raise taxes. And I tell you this, if uh, the federal tax rate uh, goes up, uh, we'll pay for it in more ways than one. Mm. Thank you, Tom. Okay, thank you. Hello, Carrie. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, Bob. I'd like to make two points, if possible. Uh, the first one being about Nelson Mandela. What people don't seem to understand is that he's been in prison for 27 years. Now, he was thrown in prison for a certain reason, that reason being he's a terrorist. He's a member, he's the head of the ANC, he preaches violence. Many times during those 27 years, he's been offered release if he would renounce the violence, and he's refused. So that's the reason he's been in jail for 27 years. Now, secondly, when he got out, uh, immediately when you saw him, there was a communist flag behind him. He aligns himself with people like Castro, like Yasser Arafat, like Muammar Gaddafi. Now, as a Jew, I feel that he's, he's my enemy. He shouldn't be treated like a hero. He should be treated like an enemy. The enemy of anybody that stands for uh, freedom. Well, all right. Okay, Thank now, you. can I make my second point? All right. Something which has been bothering me for quite a while. Every newscast, every paper, every magazine you listen to, they refer to the West Bank and the Gaza Strip in Israel as occupied territories. Now, if a country is attacked and they win the war, and they take territories. Those territories are not occupied territories. They're, they've won those fair and square. No, they, they are occupied territories unless the occupying force annexes them. Uh, international law does not uh, recognize territory that ha has not been officially annexed, and in some cases doesn't even recognize that. Israel has not officially annexed Samaria and Judea and therefore, it is still referred to as occupied territory. Well, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Anyway, I enjoyed the show very much, Bob. Thank you very much for hearing my call. Thank you, Carrie. John, this is Bob Grant. You're on WABC. Uh, Amanda, Amanda. And speak up. We can hardly hear you. Sound like you're uh, choking. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Hello? Good afternoon. Yes, what would you like? What would you like to say, John? Amanda. Uh, about, uh, Amanda. <laughs> ah, I think this guy's a little on the tutti frutti side. He's uh, yeah, yeah, making yeah. love. I have to a me. question. Yeah, I have yeah. A question. Why? 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 I just born. Uh, how come Nelson Mandela spoke in Congress of the United States? He's the first private citizen to spoke. Maybe we should elect him for president. I mean, uh, he gets everything. You know, he can get everything what he wants. Maybe we should sing a new song on the Bob Grant program. Amanda, Amanda. Isn't that uh, funny? Yeah, but you got to make the clench fist, the communist salute. Amandla, Amandla, Schmackla, Schmackla. Oh, I tell you something. The, the, the Mandela's in their group. Uh, they're, you know, they're in danger of dying of laughter when they get in their hotel room each night. 
<laughs> they must just convulse themselves with what a bunch of schnooks we are. <laughs> I know that. I think we're going down the road. Oh, there's no doubt about it. No I'll tell you one thing. It. We have to make a ticket parade for you, not for him. <laughs> Listen, I would do that if I'd be mayor. This I can tell you. No question about it. I wouldn't think of it in a minute. Well, Believe you me. John, listen, you know... A half, a half of New York would think like me. Tomorrow is a ticket I parade for Bob Grant. John, they think like me. <laughs> I really mean it. Thank you, John. Thank, Thank you very you. much. It's uh, Bob Grant this time saying hello to... Uh, okay, we have Charles on the line. Boy, that was quick. Uh, Charles Fishman, are you there in Port Elizabeth, South Africa? Are yes, you there? standing by. Yes. All right, Charles. For the second time in my life, I was in error. Uh... I finally made another another mistake, and the mistake was in thinking that you were a fake, a phony, a fraud, a prevaricator. I just couldn't believe that anybody would waste his money making a long-distance call. You must be doing it. Uh, you work for Lennon Limited, do you? Yes, they, I do. Well, they must be paying for the call then. You're, 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 you're claiming this is a business call, but that's all right. I won't tell them. Well, actually, I called you last night from my house. I may just be an eccentric millionaire. All right. So anyway, uh, Charles, you wanted it. You, you are for real. You are in Port Elizabeth. Are you there on exactly. business? Are you there on business or what? Uh, well, I work for a firm here, and uh, I rather like living here. As a matter of fact, uh, I've been out of the U.S. Uh, about four years. Uh, my previous assignment was in Papua New Guinea, where I was uh, uh, for three years in government service. What do you do, Charles? Uh, I'm an export manager for a pharmaceutical firm. Okay. I'm originally from New York and have, um, I went to Brooklyn College of Pharmacy, as a matter of fact. I have a BS in pharmacy. Charles, I, 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 my producer and I, in all likelihood, toward the end of the year, will be going there. We, uh, uh, we have very good reason to believe that uh, we'll be able to go there and do some uh, broadcasts. But uh, if we do, I would like to, uh, to meet you. Uh, nevertheless, more importantly and closer uh, to uh, the moment, uh, you wanted to tell us about how the... Mandela trip is being portrayed back in South Africa. Go ahead. You've earned the right to do that. Well, I appreciate that. I, I just, uh, uh, I had the feeling that uh, uh, Mandela having been released and now uh, marching around the world, I, I see kind of an irony in this. And, uh, I don't know. People seem to have the impression this man was in jail because he was a political dissident. Uh, as a practical matter, uh, Bishop Tutu is a political dissident and comes and goes as he pleases. And I'm not going to be a show for the South African government, certainly. I think their, uh, their record speaks for itself. But uh, uh, I think this man to, uh, to come out of jail and uh, as uh, apparently related as uh, the second coming, uh, when he was uh, in incarcerated for uh, having enough explosives and the plans to blow up uh, public facilities, uh, he could have moved your, your broadcast uh, uh, operation to Pasadena in one fell swoop. Uh, so this man is not uh, uh, as much a political dissident as really a violent person, and I think people tend to overlook that. He showed little flashes of uh, that violence, uh, although uh, he's, uh, he's very charming and although he contained it quite well. He showed little flashes uh, in a conversation with Gabe Pressman that uh, started to come out and uh, in response to uh, Gloria Toot on the Ted Koppel program that started to come out one or two other times. He showed that uh, propensity that you just spoke of. But uh, what about the television coverage back there? I, I must tell you, Charles, every channel is covering him more than they've covered any event I can remember, even more than the uh, blow-up of Challenger on the 28th of January, 1986. Uh, I do get some TV. I must confess I don't have a TV personally uh, since I've just relocated to a new flat. But uh, uh, the TV coverage has been... Uh, uh, reasonable, I guess. Uh, they have, uh, I don't watch the news in Afrikaans, certainly, since I'm not bilingual, but the American, uh, the English news, I should say, uh, has been reasonably comprehensive. And they, uh, uh, I think the press coverage is, is pretty good because we have this guy, Simon Barber, who is uh, uh, the correspondent for the local newspaper, and he seems to be uh, uh, just very incisive uh, politically, as well as uh, putting forth his, his message uh, uh, in writing well. I don't know if you're familiar with the name, uh, but the, the guy, uh, to me, uh, uh, just relates the uh, the scenario very well. And, of course, these guys have been around looking at this scene, so they're aware of, uh, uh, of okay. all of the players. In the I'm game. aware of the and name. What does Mr. Barber say? Can you uh, 
condense it for us? What is he telling the people back there? Is he telling them that Mandela is uh, having a triumphant tour? Uh, what about the auguries uh, for uh, the country in which you live? Uh, how does this, uh, what does this portend for you folks back there? Uh, well, I, I think the consensus is that uh, Mandela is, is really a, uh, uh, a shill for the party who's, who's vacillating politically and who's essentially motivated by the South African Communist Party. You know, Mandela, in, uh, as part of the evidence at his trial, uh, 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 I can't think of the, um, uh, the whole group. There was, there was a name attributed to them by virtue of the, uh, the uh, location they were arrested at. In any event, uh, these are the same guys around today, Susulu, Thabo, Mbeki, uh, and Joe Slovo has now dropped out of the sky as the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the head of the South African Communist Party. And, and, and this is their whole executive committee. And, and uh, Mandela, uh, uh, at, as evidence at his trial, uh, there was a handwritten uh, essay put forth, a 96-page document, uh, how to be a good communist. So I think the consensus at this end is that uh, uh, the ANC is really the horse uh, with the communist rider, and, and you don't talk to a horse, and everyone think, is thinking that uh, ultimately uh, that the communists will have to expose their hand and... I think the fear is that we'll, um, we may go through a, another kind of Nicaragua where these people attempt to portray themselves as moderates. I should say I have um, uh, occasional dealings with some of the white uh, uh, varieties of the, uh, the ANC, and what they tell me as, uh, uh, as a business person and, and posing questions about uh, projected business scenarios or economic scenarios for the country uh, is totally different from what they're telling the blacks. Uh, so somebody's got to be uh, lying along the line here. And uh, mm. uh, I really think they're not a, a very trustworthy bunch and certainly not uh, Jefferson clones. I, I, mm. uh, I have hopes for the, uh, the country. It's really a pretty place, which you would uh, find out when you get here, and the people are as nice as could be. And I think there's a lot of benefits to living here. Uh, uh, certainly it's, uh, it's uptown from Papua New Guinea as far as that goes. But uh, yeah. Uh, I, Charles, I, I find it most interesting. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to talk again. Thank you, Charles. Next time you, you call, Bye. next time you call, I'll know you. Okay, uh, good. All right. Bye. Okay, so we called Charles in Port Elizabeth, South Africa. Uh, I don't have to tell you what he said. He spoke very clearly. Are you there, Mary? Oh yes. It's so nice to talk to you, Bob. You're, I always uh, think you're right on the mark, and you're a true American. We need many, many more just like you. Well, there are a lot of true Americans, Mary. What, what, what's on your mind today? My, on my mind is I was terribly disgusted to watch a ticker tape parade for this Mandela where they uh, blacks didn't have the respect for America not to show one American flag in sight. And Dinkins to set up that mobile for uh, Mandela, uh, Mandela, Mandela. And are there also not a sight of an American flag that we're supposed, to, we're all supposed to be very proud of, and I am. When we have parades in New York, like St. Patrick's Polish Parade, which I'm Polish, we are very proud to uh, present our flag, and we always the American flag up front with our national flag. But people that do not respect America, what are they doing here? Why don't they go back to where they belong, where they want? to stand for anything else but Americanism. And I want to thank you very much for being and having the patience with the people like you have. Patience? Uh, you have, uh, because sometimes I wonder where you get the patience from. Really? I've never been accused of having patience. You have patience for what it calls you, and I wish I could okay. express myself a little more thoroughly, but you are wonderful. Well, I appreciate the call, the kind words. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. To you now for, I'd say, over 10 or so years. I think I remember when you were first with WMCA. I never have agreed with your political viewpoint. And uh, usually I just let you go with uh, some of the misconceptions or lies that you come up, come up with. Lies? Uh, well, this one in particular, when you talked about the uh, assembly at Yankee Stadium, you uh, said that the national anthem wasn't played. You mean they played the national anthem? Yes. As a matter of fact, Melba Moore sang it, and before she who said sang it, it? Melba Moore, who said that at first I'd like to sing a tribute to the uh, the freest country on the face of the earth. Well, why did they show that then? Why I were don't they, know. Were they, why were they hiding well, it? Well, you know that you've always gotten on the media about being slanted, so call them up. Uh -huh. 
Okay, but that's what but that I... was not a lie. If it was an error, you know, you're a jerk because you accused me of lying instead of saying, Bob, uh, you okay. missed it. That they did do it. Yeah. Hey, I wish you well. Charmaine on WABC. Hello, Charmaine. Hello, Bob. I'm so happy that uh, there's a program. Did they name a toilet tissue after you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that was Charmin. That's right. That's Charmin, not Charmaine. Yeah. Close, okay. Okay. Um, I'm from South Africa, but now I've lived, I'm living in the United States with my husband. He's an American. Now, my gripe is that last week my uncle was shot by an ANC um, a rebel in the Natal province of South Africa. That's where all the problems are happening with ANC and Nkata. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, he says that he's renouncing, he renounces violence only until, you know, the government says, doesn't want to um, have talks with him, right? But already there's violence in, in the cell with his ANC members. Well, that's why the state of emergency has not been lifted that's in right. the cell. But he says that, that the police must do something about it, right? But, now listen to this. And in the rural area, there's a farm, right? And it's, this old man was living in this farm by himself with his maid. Well, the maid was taking care of him. And two weeks ago, the maid came in, and she found that um, these ANC rebels again were, had slit his throat. Now this is revolting. Had cut out his heart, cut his private parts off, and were busy frying him on the stove, and she ran to go and call the police. Huh. She went back to her homeland. Now she's a black, right? She went back to her homeland where she stays, and there we're waiting, the ANC rebels again. They said because she went to the police, they burned her house, they put a, a, a tie around her neck, set her life alive. I know it sounds disgusting and revolting, but this is exactly what is happening with the ANC. They're trying to convert the Encarta, which is the, the um, Zulu nation, to becoming ANC members. And if they don't toe the line, they get destroyed. But it's not going to work. The Encarta is not going to uh, succumb. No, no, no. You know, uh, I had seen a report long before Mandela came to the uh, country, a report uh, neither supporting the government nor being opposed to the government, a very objective report, which uh, showed the great preponderance of blacks who have been killed by, get this, other blacks. That's right. And uh, it has always struck me as a curiosity Mm -hmm. why the people in this country, the Randall Robinsons... He's never that, been there. How can yeah, he's never been there. No, it's always... Yeah. I've always wondered why blacks, Americans, who are of African background, why they never complain when a black kills a black. I Only, find that very strange. You know, oh. the, the person is just as dead, regardless of the, whether a white shot him or a black shot That's him. right. But they never complain when it's a black perpetrator. I know. Is I agree, it, sir. You've noticed that, too. I very much so. Well, anyway, what can you do? We're living in a society that is very gullible, and, you know, they don't hear the other side of the story. I just wish there was more publicity from that side, you know, saying exactly what's happening to the poor, innocent people who are trying to make a living and are happy with the system. Well, what, you know, the question is, uh, anything can happen there. What is Terre Blanche going to do, huh? That's another side of the story. Yeah. I'm just waiting to see, because uh, history's in the making now. <laughs> but you see, uh, Patrick Evans, uh, who is... Uh, in the declared government, and very, very supportive of the ANC, uh, was in our studio last week, and we chatted. And uh, he told me, um, he said, uh, you know, you are the only American person in the media... I agree. Uh, ...who has recognized the fact that it is a domestic American political issue mm -hmm. uh, that is really uh, wagging the tail in South Africa. Mm -hmm. That the real pressure comes from uh, the uh, the feckless panderers like uh, that insipid Mario Cuomo, for example, <laughs> uh, who uh, the jerk. Uh, who is pandering to the black community for the vote. And um, you know you can under you can understand it with uh, someone like uh, David Dinkins, who says uh, uh, I'm uh, a black first and American second. But uh, how how does that square? How does that square with? People like Mario Cuomo. I mean, what, what is their rationale other than the, the egregious, uh, tawdry pandering for votes? I know, it's disgusting the way I see it. They don't want to hear the other side of the story either. It's always one-sided. Uh, appreciate the call, Charmaine. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bye.
Well, I understand that uh, El Supremo's in the uh, studio with you. No, El Supremo is not in the studio with me. <laughs> oh, well, some clown got on the phone saying he was Mario Cuomo. That was Jay Diamond who thinks he's Mario Cuomo. Oh, really? Yeah. I asked him if I could kiss his ring. And what did he say? Well, he said, I'll fax it to you. Uh huh. And then I'll be more than happy to kiss it. I see. This sounds like the one and only, ladies and gentlemen, the toast of the West Coast, Chris J. Grant. Yeah, and the reason I'm calling you is hot out here. And I told Mike we're on strike, and so I figured I'd go ahead and give my uh, radio fans, uh, you know, a little bit of <laughs> West Coast sampling. Your radio fans, eh?